this little ruler towards you so it comes out of the shot. Yeah, that's quite nice. Don't want it going down that channel. Tilt and shift lenses or tilt and shift adapters use Scheinflug theory to correct depth of field or increase depth of field across a specific plane. By tilting the lens in a direction that is more matching the direction of your subject, you can increase depth of field across that plane. Right, it doesn't look parallel to that. The tilt and shift adapter allows me to change the plane of focus to run more this way rather than parallel to the image sensor, which would be the standard plane of focus. So by tilting the lens forwards, we're using Scheinflog principle by changing the plane of focus, and I'm able to then make the depth of field run the direction of my subject, which really helped because it means I can get the entire shot sharp from here all the way to the back whilst shooting at f11. It took a long time for Ashley and I to move and position everything here because we're very pedantic with all of the positioning and making sure everything was absolutely square and this being the central point of interest. And then we built up around that with the three blips of orange, three blips of blue here, and certain key objects on those points. There are many types of tilt and shift lenses from wide angle to short telephoto and these are available for 35mm cameras as well as the medium format system. Additionally, view cameras have built in tilt and shift in the ability to change the movements within the actual camera frame itself. We've got gloss acrylic, so highly reflective, and we've got some matte acrylic here. The gloss acrylic is going to reflect our ball of light. And the ball of light was created with this, which is the fluter of Fresnel light, casting that glow on the wall there, giving a lovely gradient ball of light on the wall. And the reason I need it up on the wall there is because this is acting like a mirror, seeing a reflection of the wall. So I'm using my plain white wall to bounce into here and putting the ball of light on the wall. This scrim with this light overhead was just set at a very low power. So my main fluter light was on 6.6. .6. This was only on 2. Uh, oh, actually 3.1 now. So 3.1, 6.6. This was just to give a little bit of gentle fill to fill in the shadow side, because all the light was coming from this direction. Um, so just a tiny little bit of fill on this side, and that's it. So it's a two light setup, admittedly needs a big white wall, but you could set up some big uh, boards or just use the, your, your studio wall uh, to create something like this. Here I'm going to do a comparison with the tilt and shift adapter adjusted to the correct position for maximum depth of field. Then I'm going to use it in an artistic format and reverse the depth of field for creative effect. I'm also going to apply just the standard 120mm macro lens so you can see the depth of field compared to using a tilt and shift adapter at the same aperture setting.
in the comparison shot where I didn't use the tilt and shift, you can see dramatically that the depth of field does not reach the back of the shot. So really happy with the final shot of this technical drawing instrument array. Um, took advantage of the tilt and shift adapter here. You could use a tilt and shift lens, of course, but with the Hasselblad system, it's a tilt and shift adapter uh, with the 80 mil lens, which converts it into about 120 mil because it's got 1.5 magnification factor. But really, really pleased with the final result. So when I started off lighting this shot, I went for an overhead scrim and that was a big mistake because I was getting a huge sheen in uh, the metal work and, and way too uh, much overexposure on the metal objects. So I reverted to a scrim on the right and a scrim on the left, but the lighting just looked a bit boring and flat. It didn't really have the same bite to it um, that I wanted. So I decided to switch to a more dramatic lighting. And if you want dramatic lighting, you always go for little pools of light. And that's what we've got going on right here. So we have this light here. Ash, if you could put the modeling lamp up on this one, please, and we'll see this one. So uh, you'll see this beam of light here. We've got a beam of bright light cutting across there. Okay, turn that one down again, please. And then turn that scrim light. That's a little bit of fill soft light on the right hand side of the shot here. Uh, just turn it off on the lamp head only please um, so that we can just lose that one. So that's a nice soft light on that area. Just turn it back on again. So we've got a nice soft light from that one. It's low down. The light's low down on the scrim. That's illuminating that metal there softly. Let's turn that off again Ash. We've then got a beam of light striking through here coming from the projection attachment. There you can see it just there. And then another important pool of light here coming from a snoot with a grid inside the snoot creating that lovely little patch of light here. And then another snoot with a grid creating a patch of light just here. And if I take a look at those on screen, here we can see the patch of light on the scissors here we can see the patch of light on the uh, orange stencil in the center of the shot. And then if we go to the far right shot, here you can see the lovely soft lighting on the metal work there, on uh, those chrome shiny objects and on the edge of the uh, T-square or whatever that thing's called. And then on the far left shot, you can see that grazing light from the um, P70 with the tight grid. And those three shots will be combined to uh, stitch together and make that geometrically perfect stitch. Let's just pop that back on, please, Ash. Uh, that'll make the geometrically perfect stitch uh, that we need um, to join these images together. And we've accomplished that by using a tilt and shift adapter. So I could shift the lens to the left, to the center and to the right so that the camera axis and angle doesn't need to change because if the camera had to turn, then there's geometric distortion. So by using the tilt and shift, clonk, 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 we'll get a perfectly flat field uh, stitched together image, uh, which the software can easily apply. So that's the, the lighting. Started too soft, it looked too boring, added a bit of drama by going to tight little pools and spots of light.